Hello, what's up everyone? This is Bob Pen. Today I'm going to make a video and give you an overview of the SOS workflow engine. So if you have watched my another video, which is the overview of SOS notebook, you know that SOS has two parts. One is the SOS notebook, which is a multi-language notebook environment based on Jupyter. And the other one is the SOS workflow engine, which will be the topic of this video. So let's get started. So let's suppose that you have only uh, completed one analysis uh, consisting of two steps. So basically what uh, I try to do is to plot something using values from an Excel file, but because I do not know how to read Excel files from R, so I use Python to uh, Python pandas to convert the Excel file to CSV and then use R to plot it. Uh, so maybe you know how to read Excel file in R. I, I suppose there will be libraries for that, but that's not the point. So suppose let, let's see. We have a convert.py, which basically use the uh, Python pandas library to read Excel file and then write to CSV. And we also have the plot.r, and which uh, read the CSV file and then uh, plot plot a PDF file. So um, I have done my analysis, but say after a few months, when I go back, it, it I might have a difficult time to figure out what exactly what I did because um, there's two files and for your analysis, there can be more and it's not obviously what has been uh, executed first and then what's the input and what's the output and then so usually what I would do is to write a readme file I mean this is a directory is with a readme and say exactly what I did but a better way to do that would be just create a workflow using SOS which is actually very easy I will show you exactly how to do that so suppose that um, I can create another file. This is our first SOS workflow. What I would do is copy my script here. And we know this is the first step is Python. And second is R. So let's say we SOS run. SOS is, is the command for the SOS workflow. Run is the action to, uh, is to, to run that script. And let's see, SOS run another SOS. So what you are seeing here is that executing the default workflow, zero means the first step of workflow with no input. And this is the output of the R script. And you can see that now we have two more files. The one is the CSV file that's created by the Python script, and the other one is the result of PDF created by the R script. So we can have a look at the PDF file, and you see that it's nothing fancy, just plot of some arrays. But as you can see, that after you run the SOS workflow, that two scripts are executed. So as a bookkeeping tool, you can do something more. Uh, but let me just to just to show you what a typical SI workflow would look like. Yeah. Okay. So um, I actually I didn't add many things to that because this is a typical header for SOS script, which say if you if this script can be executed from command line, it will be used. It will be executed using the SOS runner command, and the second line is just specify the version of the SOS format, and then I just indent the script so that it looks much easier, I mean, much nicer to know that script has two scripts, which is Python and R. And then if we run this script, uh, actually I can change it to another method of running. So I, so if I do that, if I give the script a executable permission and then 
The SOS runner command will be used to execute the script, and it's the same thing as SOS, SOS run, but just to show you that you can do this, okay? But typically, you can also do because um, SOS uh, workflow is extended from Python, so you can use the Python comments, something like, okay, uh, this analysis uh, reconverts a Excel file to CSV and use R to plot a log to fold change against a stat. So you can do this and then just to uh, just like a readme file so that when whenever you look back you know that uh, what you did for this analysis was for this purpose and then you execute a Python and R script. Okay? So um, so that's the very basic SOS script that is it's very easy. I don't think it, it can be any easier than that. And then say you can add a header to that. So basically you can separate your, uh, uh, your workflow into steps. And the easiest way to do that would be just add a, add a header of numerically numbered steps. Say I would like to this is the step 10 and 20. Actually, you can use any like one or two, but I usually use 10 or 20 or 100 or 200 because in case I want to, I want to insert another step between the, those two steps, I can do that. So, and then if I run this, you will know that this is say executing the default 10 and default 20, okay? So the, there are actually two steps and you can actually specify multiple workflows in the same file. Say, work, say this is the workflow, and but if you have only one workflow in the in the XOS file, then you don't have to specify the workflow name. But in this case, I just specify the workflow, and you can see that the first step is workflow ten, the second step is workflow twenty. You can use any name here. So up till now that you have only used SOS as a bookkeeping tool. Uh, so let's see, uh, suppose that after a while and you need to apply your workflow in, uh, to another dataset. And then in this case, you can uh, specify the name of the file as a parameter to, to your SOS script. What you can do, you can do is say parameter, define a parameter. The parameter, um, let's say, is dg list equals to. Let's just use this file name as the default value. Okay. Then with this definition, then you have a variable in SOS, and you can use this variable to compose your scripts. So what exactly I meant was that you can say this is dg list. This is the variable. And because SOS by default doesn't doesn't expand anything, you need to say expand equals to true. And in this case, then when the file is specified and then it will create a variable here, and then this script will expand it with all the expressions between braces. So this will be replaced by the file name. So let's see, uh, suppose that um, um, I have another input file, just copy that, another xsx. And then I run, just, just note that although I use dg underscore as a Python uh, variable name, I can use a dash from the command line, or you can use underscore just as a convenience figure, a feature. Say so this is another dot xsx. So what actually happens is that right now the, the, this file name will be going to here and will be replaced here, but you don't actually see that because for the input and output of the uh, step, they're all empty. So to fix that problem, you can actually specify the input and output of each step by using the input and output statement. For example, for this one, I would say the input is this one, Output is a file, which is this name. Okay, then with that, I can say this 
I, I don't have to use the DG list uh, just like that. I can use the input because with the definition of input and output, the SOS will define a number of variables uh, which includes underscore input and underscore output and some other variables such as step input, step output, and step name, which uh, we'll show you in another video. So actually, even for the second step, we can say output is result.pdf and we can say this is the input and this is the output. Oh, so I did it with this one. And we also need to say expand equals to true. Okay. Let's see what uh, if we have any, everything. Yes, I think we have everything here. Then if we run that, now we can see that executing this input is a file target. There's there there are other type of targets, but right now we only handle files. So we have file input is another is an Excel file, and the output is CSV for the second step. The input is a CSV and the output is the result, but you might have noticed that I didn't specify the, out the input of the second step. That is because if you do not specify the input of, the, of a, a step, then it will take the output of the previous step as the input. So, so in this case, I, ha I don't have to specify the input here. So anyway, you might also wonder, say, I mean, this is good. I, I have seen your input and output, but what exactly is the point of having specified the input and output? Let me just show you. Say, if I run the script again, there's something has changed. Basically, what it says that the input is that one, and this step is ignored because of the saved signature. And that step is also ignored because of the saved signature. Because when you specify input and output of the steps, SOS will remember the input and output and the script of your steps, and then you will save a signature after they are executed. So that when you execute the same thing again, then it will just, uh, just, just, uh, Ignore that. So, so this is very helpful because in biomedics analysis, sometimes you're handling very large files and then for very long commands, you you do you do not want to uh, execute the same command again and again, especially because when you are modifying your scripts and then you are modifying the first step and then the second step would be the same, but you don't want to run that again, right? So that what I meant is that, so for example, if I do the same thing to the uh, original file. So in that case, I don't have to specify the parameter, but anyway, I'll just use the parameter. Then what will happen is that, uh, as you can see that, okay, the first step, because I have changed the, the input, so the first step has been re-executed, but for the second step, because the because of the input, the DigiList and the Anana are the same, so the result of the CSV is the same. So what happened was that the second step of the, of the workflow was ignored due to save the signature. Uh, I think this video has showed you the very basic of SOS workflows and how to create a workflow and uh, with the steps and then how to specify parameter and input and output. So uh, I thank you very much for watching. I will continue with another video on a more advanced features of SOS. Thank you.